Today on Real Life, it's National Day of Prayer, and Rabbi Jeff Kipp is back to talk about the prayer movement right here in Pittsburgh. Plus, we have an all-new Miracles in American History. Bill Federer explains how God's hand was at work during World War I, and the pastors are in the house, and I'll be on the panel tackling hard questions about women. Real Life starts right now. Welcome. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus, he died for you, and the Holy Spirit empowers you. The Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Black. I'm here with my beautiful bride, Terry. Uh, pastors are here. Can you tell? I know. Can you tell I can here? always hear. There's a lot of chatter, 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 chatter when no, the pastors that's the, are here. That's the sound of like a mighty rushing wind. Mighty rushing wind. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened in Acts. It was a mighty rushing, the sound of a mighty That's rushing right. wind. That means that the Holy Spirit's moving. That's right. Well, you know, let's talk about that. This is a National Day of Prayer. Okay. Holy Spirit, National Day of Prayer. How long has there been a National Day of Prayer? Well, you know, I just happen to know President Reagan is the one who declared that we would have a regular National Day of Prayer. Oh, really? So that was uh, part of his legacy. So today's the day. Awesome. We, we pray. We pray across the country to all different kinds of places, all different yeah. kinds of congregations. But you can pray. You can pray just by yourself individually. Well, if some of us that are watching, we're gonna. We all are like, yeah, we want to pray. But what should we pray about? That's where you go to the website. When, mm -hmm. when Rabbi comes up, he's going to talk to oh, us really? about that. Oh, really? Awesome. So. so you want to stay tuned to find out how we can pray individually and corporately. That hey, sounds we got to cool. tell the folks at home, God answers prayers. He is a, a prayer answering mm -hmm. mighty God. We have a plumber that came. <laughs> a plumber came. He did. He came at the, at the right time. See, at the God's right always time. on time. Because we had two days worth of not having dishwashers or yes, sinks, that's but right. at the right time. That's right. In, as the Bible says, in the fullness of time. In the fullness the, the, of the time. The plumber came, and he's a believer, Christian, yes, that's Christian right. brother, that's and right. fixed it. That's right. Thank took, you, Brett. Took, took him a couple <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Listen, the applause machine for fixing our plumbing. <laughs> that's appropriate. John that's and appropriate. I were talking about that. I remember when there. Were not dishwashers, <laughs> you know, and um, they were not even included in the. I remember it's, when I was the dishwasher. I know that's why I was going to say my sister and I were the dishwashers. Uh -huh. I was the One dishwasher, of, and my my brother was the dish dryer. Oh, we I we took turns, you know, but I'm sure a lot of you don't remember that. And now, isn't that funny? You just can't imagine having daily lives without using your dishwasher. Isn't that it's just, just how our, how we've changed and grown? And that's sort of like how we are in Christ. We grow in Christ, <laughs> right? Wasn't that something? I'm, 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 I'm going with you on the transition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sliding with you on the transition. I'm not the same yesterday that I am today. Are you today. the fo fixed or broken dishwasher? You know, I probably could be saying I'm a little broken, a little and broken I'm on the way to being fixed. The, the water's walk, oh. working, but maybe it's a little sl slow. <laughs> There's little sluggish. Slow. Little sluggish drain. Got some plugs in there. But that's what plugs, real life I is, mean. folks. That's, that's what right. we are here to celebrate mm -hmm. is God's abundant life, the real life of Christ. He yes. gives us these promises, and he gives us the ability to fulfill. He's going to fulfill the promises in us. That's what real life is all about. Every day we, we kind of go down right. this path. And we talk about things that are real, that are mm -hmm. that are part of our everyday life, like dishwashers and sinks being uh, plugged up. If you haven't had it happen, I hope you never do. That's right. But God is in it. He's in all of these things. And our go for you and our go for our, ourselves, frankly, is that we would be able to hear God more clearly, respond in obedience, and then watch and see what he does. Mm -hmm. Watch what he does. And that's what's going to happen in this program. We have, as we said, our, our hard questions today. We're going to tackle a really tough question. And Pastor Amy's going to join us. This is a rare thing, so we're going to go there in just a second. But first, let's find out what uh, Sydney found in the news.
By the grace of God, a group of parishioners survived a tornado that tore through a Texas church. 45 members of St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church in Emory are counting their blessings after living through the storm. This past Saturday night, the twister blew through both ends of the sanctuary. Worshippers took cover in a hallway as the storm approached the church. Members told CNN everyone dropped to the floor and protected each other. As soon as the worst was over, they tried to keep the kids calm. This incident came the same day about four tornadoes ripped through Texas, killing at least four people. Parishioners held Sunday mass outside the church the next morning and praised God for the people that survived. Well, here we are at the Hard Questions panel where pastors come together and we talk about the issues of the day and look for the answers right out of the Bible. I'm the moderator of this panel and on today's panel are... I'm Pete Giacalone from Rainbow Temple Assembly of God Church in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Chris, Chris Gibbs, pastor at Crossway <laughs> Church in the Mars area. And I'm Amy Schaefer from Grace Life Church in Monroeville. J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center on Mount Washington. We're closer to God. You better talk to him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, because you're up on the mount. <laughs> Don't hear the Sermon on the Mount. Oh, come yeah. here. Every Sunday there's there a is. Sermon on the there Mount. Is. There you go. Every Sunday there's a Sermon on the Mount. Well, Amy, we, we welcome you, Pastor Amy, yeah. to the Thank to you. The it's great to be here. Yeah. You give us a little class. <laughs> Can add a, a little class to yeah. the panel. Oh, He's trying to say you. you're the prettiest one here, Amy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't think I had to say that. No, I think that was self-explanatory on that, that, that one. That, that, that didn't have to be said. But this is about a, a question I think is perfect because you're with mm -hmm. us. Yes. Because it's often thought, and people ask this question because there's a scripture that says that women are the weaker vessel. We're to treat women as the weaker vessel. That's a Peter talking, mm -hmm. 1 Peter 3, 7. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is what it says. It says, husbands, likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Okay, so let's dive into that verse, pastors. What, mm -hmm. What's Peter talking about? Well, you know, Don, last night I, I sat in my living room with my wife and for a solid hour, hour and a half, we went through this. I went through almost every commentary available. Um, but you know, when it comes time for the woman, uh, it's not the idea that the man supersedes the woman because the greatest gift that God ever gave man was woman. Amen. I, I once heard the story that God created man, looked at him and said, I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> and he definitely did that when he created my wife. He definitely did better. You're starting a dangerous trend here, yeah, brother. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're, tipping, you're, tipping the, you're tipping the hat. What about on this side? Yeah, you know what? The, one of the things you got to look at, I mean, uh, I looked at some commentaries, but I like looking at the words that were used and look mm -hmm. at the language of the words. Right. And we have a really a poor understanding of some of the words that are used in English. Now, first of all, let's understand that Peter, uh, you know, could put his foot in his mouth from time to time. And so people have also taken his words out of context. But what says weaker vessel, mm -hmm. uh, does the Bible say that a woman is a weaker vessel? Yes, it does. But we got to understand what the word weaker means. It means yeah. weaker, not inferiority of intelligence, right. but right. valuable and fragile to be prized, not to be trophied, but to be prized and appreciated uh, for that. As men, we are called to protect, to value, not to abuse. Mm -hmm. And we have to honor our wives as the prize that God gave us. Mm -hmm. Pastor Jay. Oh, I'm saving you for last. Yeah. Oh, okay. Saving you for last. She's been chomping at the bit. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm just, we got to get it out on the table. Let's get it out on the table. And then let's go, let's go to Amy. Well, I like the part where it says that your prayers won't be hindered. So there's something about the man's That's ability right. to initiate certain right. things to his wife. Right. Mm. I believe that men are initiators and women are responders. Whatever a man initiates, a woman multiplies. So he's saying dwell with them according to knowledge, understanding right. that they're weaker, that... But what you initiate, they will begin to grow. They'll begin to develop. They'll begin to nurture. Because it says your heirs together right. as a great start. So there are things that if the man doesn't take the proper role mm -hmm. that he needs to take, there are certain things that won't be released into his life. And so I believe that God will never give a man more authority in his family than he's willing to die for. 
He has to be willing to die for his family, wow. for his wife, in order to get the authority. So it, when men say, I want to be the head, what you're saying is that I want to die. Because the more that you die, the more that you're honoring her, mm -hmm. honoring that woman, making sure she becomes what she needs to become. Yeah. And as you do that, you'll get back in return with interest what you've always wanted. Amen. Well, and, and I think, too, kind of going off of what Pastor Chris said, uh, the woman as the weaker vessel, are we spiritually weaker? No. No. Are we uh, mentally weaker? No. Are we physically weaker? Yeah. I mean, mo I would say most women are more, are, are physically weaker. If we were to get into fight with a man, most women would uh, fall because we're not created with that physical kind of strength. There were times in our ministry where I wanted to quit and I just, I felt weak and my husband was strong. There were times he wanted to quit and I was stronger sure, mentally sure. and in a, in a spiritually mm. strong shape. Mm. And we stayed. And he loves to tell that story how mm -hmm. I wanted to pull the covers over my head and say, I'm done with this. I'm done with ministry. Mm -hmm. I'm done with this fight. And I said, oh, no. And I went out and I found another building and I made sure we kept on That's with right. the faith, you know, the, the call and the gifting of God in our life. Mm -hmm. So women are strong. Women have babies. There you go. That's right. That's Say no more. Men couldn't handle that. Say no more. I mean, cool with me. Say no more. But I think that. That, that I'm okay that with that. The stress of this scripture comes when men use it to dominate to over be, women. Right. Little, They're okay. the weaker vessel. Okay. Right. They don't have a clue. Yeah, I right. know everything. And but that's not. Well, Amy, That's not in the right that perspective. Actually, you're exactly right because that would be contradictory to what it says in Ephesians 5 when Paul writes that women, or excuse me, that men are to love their wives mm -hmm. as Christ loved the church. Mm. And so you look at what Jesus did. Jesus didn't dominate anything. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he looked like the weaker vessel in mm -hmm. the eyes of many because of his humility, right? Mm -hmm. he, uh, now, it's... it's, it's Tagging that with what you said about uh, prayers being unhindered. Look, if we're to, if as a man, as a husband, I'm to, I'm to love my wife as Christ loved the church, that means I am to be Christ to her, right? Mm -hmm. I'm to be Christ to her. And if I am not loving her like that, willing to die for her, mm -hmm. how can I stand before God with integrity to say, hey, answer my prayers, even though I am misrepresenting you mm -hmm. to my wife? Right. And remember what Proverbs says, he who finds a wife finds this a good, good thing, thing. Oh. and yeah. obtains favor. <laughs> so that favor of the Lord is right right in there. So, and, and I love, Jay, what you said earlier too. Also, the fact that when we exalt our wife, then we really come to know what, what Christ's entire mission was. Until we come to the place that we exalt our wife, honor our wife, comfort our wife, uh, we'll never know the mission of what Christ did for the church. And I also believe that there are things that our wives can get away with that we can't. Right. There are times my wife can say things to me or do things to me and God will be like, love her anyways. You know, think about it. There are times, you said it perfectly, Christ on the cross. Look at all that he went through and everything that he uh, endured for us. And even though we're hitting him, I think he still stayed committed. And I believe even in that situation, you take a look even at domestic violence. If a woman hits a man, right. even in the natural, no I mean, a little slap on the hand. A man hits a woman, it's a horrible, horrible mm -hmm. thing, which it is. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, though, there are more responsibilities, I believe, in the man, in the marriage relationship than there are in the women. Actually, there's a lot of wisdom in this First Peter 3 mm -hmm. for women specifically. We can actually win over our husbands just by our behavior and how we act alone. That is strength. That is not weakness. Um, I, I, keeping a, a solid emotional state where, uh, where the inside of us is beautiful, not just the outside, but That's the good. inner parts That's of good. us, like Smith Wigglesworth wife. I mean, a great man of faith. He said, had it not been for my wife, mm, right. I would not be where I am with God today. That is the strength mm -hmm. that uh -huh. a woman has mm -hmm. that if we'll do what the Bible says, it actually works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, key words, <clears throat> understanding, honor, uh, being heirs together, grace of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chris, you hit it right ahead when you talked about key words there and, mm -hmm. and you really don't need to go to the to all the commentaries I did foolishly. No, 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 but, no, no, you know, no, that was but, good. But, but uh, uh, just to dig a little bit deeper there, but, but when we live this, guys, when we live this, oh my gosh, Amen. It's, it's a great life. The, the, the word says in, in Christ there is no male or female. female. Right. There's no Jew or Gentile. So 
there is in God's world, and I know he created us with, with different sex, from a sexual perspective, but in Christ, he doesn't see us like that. Mm -hmm. Just say, well, that's the woman's category and that's the men's category. God calls us all right. with the Holy Spirit because the common denominator is the Holy Spirit. It is. Right. What makes us strong is the Holy Spirit. Right. Right? Yeah. Is, is whether you're male or whether you're female. This scripture has been so misused. It is. Oh, yes. Because what we've... Men who are weak in their own minds, I think this is more an admon admonition to men. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. It doubt. says to yeah. men, hey guys, if you want to reach what God's call is in that, your that, life, that's right. if you're going to do what you're called to do and achieve the goals, yes, you're, because a wife is in the scripture talks about being a helpmate. If, oh so if gosh, you're going to be man, if you're going to be what you're supposed to be, yep. you ain't going to get there Amen. unless you honor and, yep. and, and treat your wife with the respect Amen. that Amen. she deserves mm -hmm. as your support. And then together, then in unity, you have the, the capacity to see Amen. all things done. And it's not like a domination thing. If it becomes a domination thing, then, then it's all off. Right. You know, it's all off. I think it's a great question, though. Yes. It is a it's very a super great question. question. Because it's been, as I say, it's been a, uh, uh, an issue that people have used as a, as a battering ram. Yeah. And it's just fall, it's a fall, it's a false doctrine from that perspective. Mm -hmm. We're glad that you sent us in the question. Thank you for doing that. Uh, we want to hear from you. We'll take any of your questions. Don't be shy. Send them to hardquestions at ctvn.org. Or you know what? You know what you can do right now if you have a question and you're stimulator right now. You say, <laughs> I got a question. Call us, 888-665-4483 and say, here's my question. And one of our prayer partners will take the call and write it down. We'll put it in the queue and then you keep watching and you'll see what the pastors have to say about that. This, this, this segment is a half hour program too. So tune in and watch the half hour with the pastors. That's what gets into the deep waters and you get a lot out of it. One of our most popular programs is Hard Questions and Sister to Sister happens to be yeah. Sister to Sister see? right here. So we're glad, you, we're glad you watch those programs. Let's go to Terry. You know, I just love Hard Questions and I'm sure you are with me on that as well. I like how they talk about these really critical questions. And you know, for this one, I think they take this, a lot of people take this verse out of context. And I really liked what they had to say in that it's really about honoring one another. And then how Christ, he was the best example of all and that he was one of a servant. And you know, my friends, that is what we need to know is that Christ died for you. He gave his life for you. He poured out his life for you and he loves you and that we are his children and we are his heirs and that what we need to do is to receive his love and to know that he loves and he is the one who respects you and that we are spiritually strong through him. We are physically strong through him and we are emotionally strong through him. I invite you to right now to join me as we pray together to say, Jesus, come into my life. Father, make me physically, spiritually, and emotionally strong. Will you join me? Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you came for us. Thank you for your love for me. And right now, God, I just ask you would just come into my life. Father, forgive me of my sins. Make me spiritually strong, physically strong, and emotionally strong, and we will celebrate together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for praying that prayer with us. Please give us a call at 1-888-665-4483 and we'll be right back. When I lost my job, our bills kept coming faster than we could pay them. My wife and I feel like we were drowning, that there was no way to be free. My addiction became worse and worse until one day, my wife found me on the floor. I need hope. I wish I could feel joy again. I've become so negative. Every day our prayer partners take calls from hurting people. We're working in God's harvest field 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Will you join us in this kingdom work? When you become a harvest partner, we're gonna send you our Turning the Tide teaching on DVD, two CD set and a study guide. This is a powerful teaching to help turn the tide in your life. We'll send it along with our beautiful Harvest Partner mug. 
This is our gift to you. Call now. You know, you as pastors know how important it is to have partners. Mm -hmm. um, you know. It's it's life changing Absolutely. to have people partner with you. What it does makes it mean? All the so, what does it mean to you in your congregation when somebody comes and whether it's a member or they stick with you and they, mm -hmm. they, they, they they're part of the team? How does that make you feel? Um, it well, it's a, it gives you like that extra empowerment that you need to do what God's called you to do. Mm -hmm. We call them like pillars in the local church. They're there mm -hmm. to serve. Uh, with their time, treasure, and talent. But I mean, mm -hmm. when people get behind you financially, you can make things happen for the kingdom of God because a vision without provision oh, that's good. is oh, that's just a good. great idea. That's a great word. So really good. that those partners help with the provision to push that vision that God has ordained mm -hmm. to happen. Amen, that's really good. Whether you've been just started or you've been there for a long time, mm -hmm. it's the same truth, Jay. Right. It is. Well, you know, I appreciate people that link up with us because uh, a lot of people give you promises and say, you know, hey, I'm with you, I'm with you. And I tell them two words, we'll see. You know, because you just yep. don't know until you hit the rough times and difficult Preach. times. And it's great to be able to link up. And what's awesome about linking up as well is that one plus one, or when you have two people coming together, God steps into the middle. That's and that's right. why one puts a thousand, two puts 10,000 flight because God comes together in agreement. So even as you link up with Cornerstone, you multiply your blessing. Even as you're making the gospel go forward, the blessing of the Lord gets multiplied in your life because when you link arms with this soul winning right. ministry, God will begin to multiply things here as well as for you. So one plus Excellent. one equals three. I think Amen. that's, a, Amen. That, that, that's such the, that's such a cool thing when you plant seeds. I just think it's Amen. such a cool yeah. thing. We planted some seeds out here in our, in our, on our lawn because we're going to have concerts yes. this summer. We're gonna have five concerts out on the lawn this summer. And we had some spots that needed to be grass. You know, they were bare spots. And so the, our team was out there and he was planting seeds. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Because we've never had, a, I've never had a lot of success getting grass to grow. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. But then all, a couple of days later, three days, four or five days, I see this little green kind of <coughs> color on the ground. I walked over there and said, the grass is growing. Yeah. And you see the miracle of the seed because mm -hmm. what was dry and seemingly dead mm -hmm. went out onto the ground, was pre right. prepared, and then we start to see it grow. Mm -hmm. That's what, when you plant a seed into the ministry, it's exactly the same thing. That seed starts to grow. And as Pastor Jay just said, mm -hmm. it grows in the ministry, gives the ministry the, the ability to go out and do the things that God's called that ministry to do. And it grows in your life because then it comes back to you as a harvest. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're a seed in your yeah. ground and you got seed for yourself. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a double blessing. Right. And Amen. that's what, how you could be a harvest partner with us. Because being a harvest partner with us, that just allows us to do the provision yeah in doing God's work, not only here, but around the world. So we invite you to be a partner with us. Call us at 1-888-665-4483, and we'd love to have you join us. Great. Well, today, one of my favorite segments, Miracles in American History, Bill's going to talk about how God used a humble soldier mm -hmm. to become a hero. You know the story already, so pay real close attention in World War I. A story you just have to know from World War I. On May 11, 1918, President Wilson proclaimed, it being the duty peculiarly incumbent in a time of war, to acknowledge our dependence on Almighty God and to implore His aid and protection, a day of public humiliation, prayer, and fasting be observed by the people of the United States with religious solemnity and the offering of fervent supplications to Almighty God for the safety and welfare of our cause, His blessings on our arms, and a speedy restoration of an honorable and lasting peace to the nations of the earth. Therefore, I exhort my fellow citizens of all faiths and creeds to assemble on that day in their several places of worship and pray Almighty God that He may forgive our sins. Less than a month later, May 28, 1918, four U.S. divisions were deployed with French and British troops, and they won the Battle of Cantigny, America's first offensive of the war. On October 8, 1918, an American battalion was pinned down by machine gun fire along the Decauville rail line north of Châtel-Charest, France. 
Sergeant Alvin York described the Germans got us. They stopped us dead in our tracks. Their machine guns were up there on the heights overlooking us and well hidden, and we couldn't tell for certain where the terrible heavy fire was coming from. Those machine guns were spitting fire and cutting down the undergrowth all around me. With all but eight killed, Sergeant York took charge and proceeded to take out 32 machine guns, killed 28 enemy, and captured 132. He received the Medal of Honor, stating, Some of them officers have been saying that I, being a mountain boy and accustomed to woods, done all these things the right way just by instinct. I have not never got much learning from books except the Bible. Maybe my instincts are more natural, but that ain't enough to account for the way I come out alive. With all those German soldiers raining death on me, I'm a telling you the hand of God must have been in that fight. Just think of them 30 machine guns raining fire on me point blank from a range of only 25 yards and all them their rifles and pistols besides those bombs. And then those men charged me with fixed bayonets and I never received a scratch and bringing 132 prisoners. I have got only one explanation that God must have heard my prayers. After the war, Sergeant Alvin York came back to America and started a Bible school. The war ended with the signing of the armistice, November 11th, 1918. Five days later, President Wilson proclaimed, complete victory has brought us. God has indeed been gracious. While we render thanks, let us not forget to seek the divine guidance and divine mercy and forgiveness. Wherefore, I designate a day of thanksgiving and prayer to render thanks to God, the ruler of nations. President Wilson said in his sixth annual address, December 2nd, 1918, what we all thank God for with deepest gratitude is that our men went in force into the line of battle just at the critical moment when the whole fate of the world seemed to hang in the balance. America has a unique history of faith and it's important for us to remember these men and women of courage and faith and the miracles in American history. amazing. <laughs> That's one of my favorite new stories. <laughs> favorite new stories? Yes. Now, mm -hmm. you, did you know about Sergeant York? I'm sure many, many, many of you watching said Sergeant York. Gary Cooper played him in a movie, I guess in the 40s maybe? Thir 40s, probably the 40s, know. 50s. Uh, one of my favorite movies too, but the story is a real story of how God supernaturally saved the, the world really through the actions of one man. Yeah. One one boy from Tennessee. Yeah. And he didn't have much learning. That's what they said. <laughs> he, didn't, right? he didn't have book learning, but yeah. he sure had, he Bible, sure had learning. Bible learning. That's, That's right. the same idea as the butterfly effect, that what we do, even though it seems so small and significant, can actually ha play into effect years and years later. And we're, we're seeing that today. Many stories of people, uh, same kind of guy, yeah. in war, in a time of critical, they made a, a small decision that made a big rippling impact. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, our nation is, is almost at exactly the same spot today. Amen. And the last time that a president called for a National Day of Prayer, fasting and repentance was then, Woodrow Wilson, mm -hmm. almost 100 years ago. Wow. Almost 100 years ago. Okay. And so we're launching a campaign, our In God We Trust Amen. campaign, that's gonna ask, that is asking, it's gonna ask, uh, President Trump to declare September the 11th as a national day of prayer, fasting, and repentance. Mm -hmm. Because we are at that place where we are being attacked by enemies right. and seem right. mm -hmm. surrounded in many ways by an invisible enemy now mm -hmm. that we need God's protection, His, pro His providence to keep our nation free and safe. Right. But it can't come from man, it has to come from God. So we, the yeah. church has to come, we have to come together and we have to beseech heaven with prayer, fasting, and, and repentance. Well, Don, can you though clarify, because some people might be saying, well, wait, we've had other presidents call a National Day of Prayer. A prayer, yeah, today, yeah. actually okay. today right. is mm -hmm. the National Day of Prayer. But to national, then what happens is a lot of times we, we pray and we pray with, with, with righteousness and with, with the right attitude, but it also begins to be wishy-washy and you get all the different religions together and uh, the, yeah. every religion has a prayer oh, and you right. have ecumenical, and I'm not against ecumenical, yeah. and ecumenical movements, but I'm talking about prayer, fasting, and 
repentance, Re humiliation. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what the presidents have called for prayer, but we've not called for prayer, fasting, right. and, and repentance. And that's where we are mm -hmm. as a nation. We okay. need to pray and pray specifically, pray on purpose with fasting and then with a heart of repentance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, Don, one of the big things, too, that happens that, that we noticed during the, the miracles in American history, along with us now, is that their focus wasn't on getting God to move. Their focus was on repentance. That's right. If we're getting engaged by a lot of enemies in our lives, many times because there's an area that we've opened the door because of sin. Our nation is where it is is because of the sins That's that right. we've committed. That's exactly and we need right. to humble ourselves and say, God, we need to turn back to you and ask you to forgive us of our sins. Then what did he say? Then I'll hear from heaven. So a lot of times our prayers don't get answered because we didn't repent. And we're, we're not talking about the nation repenting because the nation's not going to repent. Church. We're talking about the church. Amen. Yeah. Right. God's people mm -hmm. repenting. They don't even, the world doesn't even know they need to repent. They're lost. They're That's blinded. Right. They're in the dark. It's the church repent. What, like, what do we repent from? I mean, think about it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, repent. We still mm -hmm. fall short of right. the glory. Right. We don't have it all together. We didn't do the right thing all the time just because we have Jesus in our heart. We continually have to be renewed, repent, ask for forgiveness, and humble ourselves because we're human and we make mistakes. Well, we still fall short of the well, glory of God. Listen, Amy, uh, it, it, we, let's be real. Let's be, let's, I'll, I'll be as transparent as I can be in this regard. If, if our nation is dark, mm -hmm. the light hasn't been shining. That's right. mm -hmm. If our nation doesn't have the flavor of gospel, if it doesn't have the flavor of Christ, if we're not salty, that means the church hasn't been salty. Mm -hmm. that's right. So that's where we start our repentance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord, forgive us mm -hmm. for letting the light be hid under a bushel. That's mm -hmm. right. Father, forgive us for compromising your word for convenience and comfort. Mm -hmm. Forgive us for going along just to get along. That's mm -hmm. right. Help us, God, to stand and be salt and light. That's where we start, yeah. in the heart of repentance, because mm -hmm. that's what the Lord's looking for, a, a broken and contrite spirit. That's good. Mm -hmm. And that's going to have to come from God's people, and it can't be done in a lecture. It's done from the spirit. So that's what in God we trust. We call, we're calling the program in God we trust from, tri from tragedy to triumph. And on 9-11, we're going we're to have a whole program of tragedy to triumph. God is the God of triumph. This nation is God's nation. He's protected us. It's time to come back to him, call on him again, say, God, here we are. We come with, a, with our heart in our hand and ask for you to forgive us mm -hmm. and give us Amen. another chance. Amen. Give us another chance. I'll be able to hear much, much more about this. This is just kind of an introduction, but that's Sergeant York's story is, is a prototype of what happened then. God, let it happen again Amen. in Jesus. Let Sergeant York's rise up all over this country and take on the enemy offensively. So he went on the offense. Go get that movie. Go get the old Gary Cooper movie, watch it again. Black and white movie. Watch it again and see what God says to you in it. Well, let's go, to, let's go and see what Sydney's found in the news. Sydney Grant for Good News 360. Here's how the Holy Spirit is moving around the nation. The annual Bible reading marathon on Capitol Hill wraps up today. Since Sunday, more than 1,000 people have participated in 90 hours of continuous Bible reading from Genesis to Revelation. Organizers of the event say the marathon not only celebrates Bible reading, but also the First Amendment rights. This is the 20th year for the event. Lou Engels Azusa Now is heading east. Last year, more than 50,000 people cried out for revival in Los Angeles. The first series of gatherings on the East Coast will be held in Cleveland, Ohio. Christians from across the country will pray and worship at Quicken Loans Arena on July 22nd through 23rd. Azusa Now Cleveland is working in partnership with Daniel Kalenda and Christ for All Nations. A longtime Sunday school teacher got his wish to become a firefighter on his birthday. 97-year-old Bill Grun fulfilled his dream by riding in a Doylestown fire truck and sounded the siren. Grun says he wanted to be a firefighter ever since visiting a fire station as a Boy Scout. He says the secret to his long, successful life is his attitude. That's all for Good News 360. Have a great day on purpose. I know. Can you imagine being 97 years old and being able to have just a wish that you've always had since you were a child yeah. fulfilled? That's awesome. And 
think about all of the little lives that that 97 year old impacted by teaching Sunday school. That's we were right. We're just talking about the the differences you can make. Mm -hmm. Little things make a huge deal. How many little lives were transformed because of his faithfulness to right. teach the Bible to That's little right. ones? You know, one time I uh, went to visit Charlotte, North Carolina, in the Billy Graham Museum, yeah. Yeah. and it's really amazing. If you ever get to go, you should go. It talks about how. It, his Sunday school teacher led him to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's just how the ripple effect of the one person to another person to another person, you know, I think that's amazing. We cannot discount small, small things, small that's choices right. that we make. Well, and God is a God of the details. You know, he's 97 mm -hmm. years old and something that he had when he was a child. God still remembered. You know, a lot of yeah. times we may have certain things in our lives that we wonder if God remembered right. or if God's going to bring to pass. It may take 97 years to get on that <laughs> on that fire truck, but God is a God that'll get you where He promised. Amen. That's right. So don't let your dreams die. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you think they'll have a sound and music part too? Why, why, for dreams? That's time? my dream. Like oh, Julie oh, oh, Andrews. Oh, of That's my life. Of course. Okay. And you would sing. I don't know. I, I'd probably be one of the nuns oh. in the thing. Yes, I don't know right. if I'd want to take Julie Andrews' place. She sets a high bar. Or you could be Liesl. <laughs> no. no. Okay. No. All right. No. Well, anyhow, we like I'll be musical the head nun. theater. <laughs> <laughs> My wife loves that show, by the way. So I've never I. seen it. No way! I've never seen it. Oh my I just, gosh. I have Movie a rough night. time getting into it, so, uh, but oh she loves gosh. the sounds of music. My son even enjoys it, so. I bet you've never watched Pride and Prejudice. No. Oh, oh my goodness. gosh. Oh my. <laughs> oh, we can't we even forever. talk anymore, I Jay. Know. <laughs> you don't I even know. know about life at this point. Well, may I ask you about the first story? Lou Engel, can y'all tell me a little bit about his ministry? I've, I don't really know who Lou Engel is. Well, he's really given to revival mm -hmm. and prayer, bringing Zusa, people back to. Right? It's yes. Something with the Zusa. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's been a big person in prayer movements, okay. holding prayer movements. As a matter of fact, I think Sydney attended one of them before as well. Okay. All and right. um, he's just big on that move. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about that. As soon as we celebrated, it would be 100 and what, uh, 11 years now that the Sousa <gasps> actually wow. happened, 1906. And so it all started, though, with people coming together and pray. Great. And that's where he's been having this movement to pray that our nation would turn back to God. That's awesome. The ripple effect. Yep. Being Amen. a butterfly. Right. We can all, do you know that butterfly? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Prayer is a powerful, powerful thing, and uh, we thank God for prayer. And on this National Day of Prayer, I'm really excited because we're getting ready right now to go to Don to see what's going on in the National Day of Prayer. Hello and welcome. It is my privilege on this National Day of Prayer to introduce one of the local coordinators for the event, a rabbi of, of a marvelous uh, congregation, Yeshua Ben David, Rabbi, Messianic Rabbi Jeff Kipp. Thank Welcome, you. my brother. <laughs> Thank you. Tom. So glad that Thank you're going to be a, a, a part of this. Yes. And, yes. and this is, there's a rich history to this concept, this idea of a national day of prayer. Yes, a little background. Uh, in 1775, the first Continental Congress called for a national day of prayer. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln called for a national day of prayer. Then uh, in 1952, the Congress established the National Day of Prayer as an annual event uh, that was signed into law by President Truman. And then in 1988, the law was amended and signed by President Ronald Reagan, designating that uh, the first Thursday of May would be uh, for the National Day of Prayer. Uh, uh, that's 242 years that's right. of rich... Uh, Judeo-Christian um, history for our nation. Uh, last year, 2016, Anne Graham Lotz became the national chairperson for the National Day of Prayer. And uh, there are National Day of Prayers going on uh, throughout the greater Pittsburgh area and, of course, all over the country. And this evening, uh, Washington, D.C. will host a National Day of Prayer. Uh, so uh, it's, it's exciting to be part of. Ours has a special kind of a unique 
It, it um, really does. Talk yes. a little bit about the, the March of Remembrance yes. and how here in Pittsburgh, uniquely, you've integrated those two major events into one. Right. The national, uh, the, the, uh, every year there is an annual March of Remembrance. Uh, this has been going on for about, um, I would say, nine, ten years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and major cities all over, I think over well over 40 cities uh, throughout the United States and in many other countries do a March of Remembrance where we remember the Holocaust and we lift up the it's Jewish people uh, in prayer and uh, we light six candles for the six million that perished uh, you know and uh, and we uh, interview a Holocaust survivor so last year because the days fell on the same week we rolled the March of Remembrance into the National Day of Prayer. We decided to continue that uh, and this year. And uh, we have a local um, Holocaust survivor, Sam Gotsaman, who is going to be interviewed by Pastor Woody Barnett. Um, and uh, uh, that'll be uh, just awesome to hear Sam and, and how he survived. Uh, we'll light the six candles for the six million. And Sam will say a Hebrew blessing and prayer uh, at the end of our time together. So it's, it's a special Israel remembrance. We're the first National Day of Prayer that really is doing that. But we're really upholding a Judeo-Christian heritage for our nation. And it's a perfect fit. It is a perfect fit, and that Judeo-Christian heritage. Um, I go back, when, when you say 1775, I actually go back to the Old Testament. Oh, yeah. And, and there are a number of instances where, where the leader of, of the nation of Israel called the nation together in prayer, and one that God has just really impressed upon my heart this past week is the, the story of King Jehoshaphat. Mm. And, and, how, and, and it just so mirrors our lives because as the as the three armies, three different armies, were gathering outside the city gates, he called the nation together in prayer. And one of the interesting things about this is he sent praisers <laughs> on ahead of the army. Are you, are you a praiser? You know what? Don't, don't allow the devil to, to, to throw you into defeat. Don't allow the devil to, to cause your insecurities to rise because... If we're a praiser, the praisers go out ahead of the army. <laughs> Wonderful story of King Jehoshaphat. Oh, praise and prayer really go together, don't they, Don? Praise, they're, they're, praise and worship. Yes. And we have to right. put worship in the mix, yes. too. But, Rabbi, tell us about how to get involved. So somebody's watching on, on the program. It's today. Mm -hmm. So how do, pe how do people well, get involved? Well, there are websites that you can go on for the National Day of Prayer, and it'll show you uh, the locations of, uh, of all of our... You know, across the nation, uh, across the nation uh, uh, events are going on. Um, ours begins from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock in uh, downtown Pittsburgh at Market Square. Square. Perfect venue. It is. Uh, every time it seems to rain, God holds off the rain. <laughs> and then it rains right after the event is over. <laughs> we're, we're trusting the Lord will do that again. Uh, but, uh, yes, it's just uh, uh, it's very easy to find. Just go up on online and look up National Day of Prayer and they'll find one that's uh, nearest to, to you. Now we know that prayer, let me, let me just ask you, so we have, we have in your studio here, would you give us your working definition of prayer? What is prayer? Prayer is uh, really communicating with the Lord. It's communing, fellowshipping w with our Father in heaven and, and uh, calling out to him. Is it, oh, do you read no. your prayer? How? I, 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 to me, I think it's conversational uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it takes many different forms, many different expressions, uh, uh, interceding and supplicating and, and all, um, you know, but it really is uh, uh, getting as close to God as you can and crying out to him, calling upon his name mm -hmm. and asking him, Lord, hear, Lord, mm -hmm. Heal our nation, Lord. Hear our prayers, Lord. Forgive us, you know, for our sins. We have sinned against you, you know, uh, uh, Lord. You know, uh, uh, we we pray for revival. Please revive our church. Please, uh, uh, you know, reveal yourself to our Jewish people and to all Ooh. peoples. And 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 Lord, uh, uh, protect us from our enemies. And we pray for our government. We pray for. Our, you know, uh, our president and, and our governor and our mayor. And, so and, we're, yes. we're talking to God like you and I are talking. Right. But why would God listen to us? 
because God loves us, mm. because, because of his son, our Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, has made a way, you know, to the Father, you know, by his atonement. And, and it's just like Jesus prayed to the Father. We have the same relationship now, and the spirit of his son lives in our hearts, and we can cry, Abba, Father. And he hears our prayers, and he answers our prayers. So, and history has changed. So, so, Rabbi, God will listen to the prayers of his children yes. talking to him. Yes. Will he listen to the prayers of those who have yet become his children? I believe that he, he does hear everyone's prayer and everyone's cry. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there's so many things that are a mystery to us, but we have to realize that the spiritual realm is a lot bigger and greater and, you know, than the, the natural material realm uh, which this world consists of. It's, it's a greater, deeper, richer, more far-reaching realm that we're engaged in. And this is how we defeat our enemies and, and really, like Jehoshaphat, uh, see the Lord's victory. His he, hand. That's yes. right. I guess what you're saying is we're not God. No. He's <laughs> bigger than we are. Yes. And we can't understand him. So we have to go to, like, to him like children. That's right. Childlike faith. You know, become like a little child. That's how we enter into the kingdom, you know, of our Messiah. And it's, that's what it's about. We want to see more of the kingdom invade this world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, in just a moment, we'll be praying for your prayer request. You stay tuned. Amen. Cuba, the land of enchantment. For over five decades, the doors of this beautiful island were closed to outside visitors. Now, more than ever, we need to encourage the Christians in Cuba and preach the gospel to those who haven't heard. Join our Cornerstone Cares special mission team November 13th to the 21st as we journey to Cuba for the first time. We'll be taking the gospel to the streets of Havana through dramas and neighborhood evangelism, visiting growing Christians in local house churches, teaching children about the love of Jesus, implementing community construction projects, and so much more. Cuba needs to hear the gospel in a fresh way, and we need you. Call today for more information on how you can be a part of the Cornerstone Cares mission team. Tune in this week to watch our fourth annual Women of Valor special. Featuring real life testimonies, encouraging teachings from Christy Watts, Amy Schaefer, and Terry Black, and packed with practical advice to live as a woman of valor in Christ at any age. Tune in May 8th at 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and 8 p.m., and Mother's Day at 1 p.m. You won't want to miss it. I enjoyed that time together with Rabbi and with uh, Tom. Prayer is not complicated. It's very simple. And, you know, I know sometimes I make it complicated. I don't know how to pray. But, you know, that's why God gave us the gift of praying in the Spirit, too. Supernaturally praying in the Spirit so that we don't bypass our head. Our head can get in our way most of the time. But God wants to intercede through us through the gifts of this Holy Spirit. Let's, every day we look at the Scripture. Let's look at Isaiah 55, verse 4 and 5. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who you do not know shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. He's glorified you. So here, here's what this scripture is about. It sounds a little complicated, but it's really not. Isaiah was prophesying about the coming of the Messiah. Who would be a spiritual, physical, and political commander of his people? The church of Jesus, us, is the nation that's being described in chapter 55 of Isaiah. In the fullness of time, God will bless Israel with this new nation. There'll be one man, the, 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 the Christian and the Jew who comes to know the Messiah will become one new man and we will glorify God throughout eternity. That's the prophetic word, Pastor Jay, of what God's doing. In, as the age of the Gentiles, which we are now, and that seems complicated, but this is our season. If you want to think about it like this, this is the Gentile season, and the Lord is going to focus on, on the Jewish community in, in the, the next season, and then together 
we come as one new man through the millennial, through the mm -hmm. thousand year reign of Christ. I, I bring that up because it's important for us to know that that's what's coming. Yeah. You know, if we don't, we gotta know what's coming mm -hmm. in order to look forward with that hope and that anticipation mm -hmm. that God's in charge and he's got it all worked out. And then we know how to pray. You know, I love one thing about Jesus. He would always say things to the disciples that I'm gonna tell you beforehand. So then when it comes, you know what's great about being in prayer and about walking with God? We always have the news before it comes. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the great things, he said, all things that I've known from my Father, the Holy Spirit will make known to you. We don't have to walk in the dark. We can know what's coming. Mm -hmm. So we know the millennial reign is coming. We know the rapture is coming. We know that the end of this dispensation of the Gentiles, if you're dispensational, uh, believe, uh, if you believe in that, that, that's coming to an end. We're right on the edge. Mm -hmm. We're right on the edge. Right on the edge. Well, what's that mean to us as, 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 as... That was my question. Okay, what's okay. next? I, 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 just I, thinking, I, I like, back up, take yeah. a rewind. Right. Now, oh, what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> to us? What, what does all that mean? How about that? Do you want to answer that? Well, I was just, I was trying to put myself into, in somebody's position that had no clue sort of about the Bible or what even Jew or Gentile means and how that applies to them. That's good. But I would say this is your time. This That's is right. your moment. This is your time to get right with God. That I, you, you have to know that things are happening on a world global level that are spiritual and natural. There's a war going on. There's a, there's a, you can feel good and evil pulling against each other. You can feel different religions and what they believe that are at war war with one another, you know something has to be going on. And so now is your season to get right with God. Mm -hmm. That's good. You said it, you said it good. So that your eyes can, can be yeah. opened. Right. So then you can start to see and under, you can't even understand this until the eyes of your spiritual heart have been opened and enlightened. Mm -hmm. right. That's, that's, that's mm -hmm. good. Pastor Jay, how do you summarize this in a very simple way? Well, I think what she said, you need to accept Christ into your heart, get your life together because no man knows the day, the hour, or the time that Christ is going to return or he's going to call us home. So then we do, need to accept him now. And then when we accept him, we become born again. We now, as you said, have eyes to be able to see. God will give you spiritual insight into what's going on in your world. And I love the fact that as believers, we get to have a kingdom perspective mm -hmm. about right. everything that's going on. It's kind of like the difference between when you're soaring below the clouds in the storm and when you can be an eagle and soar yeah. above the clouds. You get a chance to see all that's happening in the news, mm -hmm. in the church and everything from God's personal perspective. Now that so, doesn't just yeah. happen though, guys. Right. You can come and accept Jesus as your savior, love the Lord, and that doesn't just happen. You have to get actively involved in pursuing God. That's right. right. You know, so we well, gotta get the Bible choice. out. It's all choices. I mean, that's what we're asking people to do, is to make a choice, to make a decision. It's not something that's gonna, well, it won't come upon you. You have to actively say and accept Jesus as your Savior. And I just want to say to somebody out there that you're full of distractions, you know, and you're being pulled so many ways and you're not sure what truth is. Well, the truth is in God's Word. And that's where you need to first ask God to open your eyes that you would be able to receive, most of all, His love, because that's a foundation of Christianity, is love. And it's not, it's not found in Muslim, Islam. Islam. It's not found in other religions that are that Christianity is founded in love and that's Amen. in Jesus Christ. Preach. Preach okay. that's, the way, that, that's the truth. Yeah. Let's go into our season of prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay, you've got a prayer request that's been called. Yes, uh, Lorraine has called in and uh, she has Gary as a family member of hers and she's believing God for salvation. So we're believing with you today, Lorraine, that mm -hmm. Gary's going to be saved. Yes. Amen. And Stephanie called in, prayer to be delivered from the fiery darts of the enemy, of the devil. And I tell you what, we've all sitting here have have been affected by the fiery darts of the, of the devil. I'm not sure he ever stops shooting fiery darts at you, but what I'm gonna pray for you is that you're gonna have the strength and the faith Amen. to quench every single fiery dart that comes at you. You've got this. Mm -hmm. Well, and I would like to, um, Robin called for her brother, Ro uh, Sean. He is in some hospital with drug addiction, and we're praying for his deliverance. It's in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Several people called for prayer for financial issues, finances for going to school, wants to get a nursing degree, finances for finding, uh, financial problems need to find a new job, financial problems and, and need uh, needs to favor with God. Several of those 
if you've called in for that, and I, I've got a practical word for you. The Lord uh, will answer your financial problems when you become a good, faithful steward with what yeah. He's already given you. Right. You see, many times we want God to rescue us so we can get back in the hole. You know, we made bad decisions since we got into a big hole. Now God, get me out of this hole, God. And then when I get out of the hole, I go back in, I go buy something else. I get the credit card out and I do this, I buy this, I gotta have a new car, I gotta, you know, you know how it is. Just the way life is. But here, to give you a praise report, Carolyn called in and she was like that too. She, she called, she said, I made a thousand dollar pledge to Cornerstone in faith that God would help her daughter, Christine. Now, Christine, she was, Christine was like that. She was in a financial pit. Now Christine has a job and is becoming financially stable. She feels very blessed by God. Thank you, Jesus. We see what that means. The seed, what we were talking about earlier in the program, the seed got, got planted and it started to grow a harvest. And Christine gets the benefit of the harvest. So if you're in a finance, the best way to get out of debt is to give your way out of it. Let's tell you right now. Give it. You don't have to give it to us. Give your way out of debt. That's how you can get out of the bondage of debt, by being a giver. If you give, you will receive, Pastor. That's right. It's the truth of the word. Amen. And plus, I believe also, take an opportunity, become a harvest partner. Uh, get in. Some of you are watching right now and you have this opportunity to be able to sow. So God has brought you down this path right now to be able to give so then you can get out of your situation. Sister, uh, right. Pastor Amy, will you pray for these sure. folks? Father, I just thank you for all of our, our friends and yes. family, brothers and sisters. Father, I pray that you strengthen them, you heal them, you bless yes, them, Lord. that you touch them, that God, you are for them, you are with them, you're yes, going to sustain God. them, you're going to help them, you're going to open uh, windows of opportunity yes, for them, Lord. you're going to help break those addictions over their lives, thank Father. You, Father, I ask that you thank restore you, everything that the enemy has stolen from them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' amen. name, amen, 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 amen. You know, I've got a special prayer request. One of our sweet sisters, Arlene Williams, is, is wrestling with some, some health issues right now. Let's all direct our prayer. I'm going to pray as we close for Arlene. Lord, help Arlene to get strong. Lord, help her to be raised up in Jesus' name. Father, give her strength. Lord, re renew her heart. Give her joy. Lord, I pray for a gift of faith and hope to come around Arlene right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a partner with us. Thank you for taking this trip with us, this journey, this adventure that we are, that we are on, that we call the abundant life, the real life. We'll see you tomorrow on Real Life. Do you want to know a secret? The Real Life newsletter is the best thing that I get in my mailbox each and every month. Packed with interesting articles, inspiring testimonials from viewers, and behind-the-scenes news from Cornerstone Network, the Real Life newsletter keeps me up to date with the shows I love. Every newsletter comes with a handy program guide, so I always know what's on. Call today for your Real Life newsletter. You're going to love it. You may have heard people on Cornerstone mention Roku, but what is it? Roku is a device that connects to your television and streams thousands of channels from all around the world, including CTVN. You can watch your favorite Cornerstone shows 24-7 anywhere from around the world. Roku is helping us take the gospel as far as possible and as quickly as possible. For more information on how to connect with us on Roku, go to ctvn.org slash Roku. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.